Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, Garden Cold Spring Harbor. Welcome back to my home. Welcome back to Long Island, New York, Gardening Zone 7A. Another beautiful, cool, yet sunny fall day here in Long Island, New York, which means it's a perfect day to plant some bearded iris in my home garden. For those of you who are not familiar with planting and or growing bearded iris, it is planted and grown from something called a rhizome. Here is an example of what a, a bearded iris rhizome looks like. Today, I'm going to give you step by step, easy yet clear and proven instructions on how to correctly plant and grow gorgeous bearded iris plants from a garden center purchased rhizome. So for those of you looking for that online gardening channel that offers tips, tricks, easy, yet proven gardening advice to take your home gardens to that next level. Don't go anywhere, guys. Stick around with me today. Start with going below this video and clicking the subscribe button. For those of you who are enjoying the content of my videos, and never want to miss yet another new garden video, don't forget to click the bell icon as well. YouTube will send you notifications every single time I'll upload a new garden video. Now come with me, let me show you how to correctly plant and grow bearded iris from a rhizome. I will be planting various bearded iris varieties today in my home garden. As you could see today, I will be planting the Superstition Bearded Iris. I love the dark purple hues. Almost looks like it's black colored. But no guys, it's a very, very deep purple colored bearded iris. I will also be planting the Sherp Smile Bearded Iris, which is beautiful pink colored flowers. I will be planting the Full Tide Iris variety which is beautiful blue colored flowers, as well as the dangerous mood bearded iris. Take a look guys, it almost looks like the superstition variety with the dark purple coloring on the bottom. However, the top portion of the flowers have this beautiful lilac colored hues. And as you could see, each one is an early summer bloomer, regardless of the coloring. Each package came with three rhizomes. So I will be planting a total of, so we have six packs times three, it's gonna be 18 bearded iris rhizomes that I will be planting in my home garden today. Regardless of the coloring of the iris flower or the variety, Bearded iris rhizomes all look essentially the same. Here I opened up the package with the superstition variety and I wanted to show you what an iris rhizome looks like. Here you go. So over here you could see where the root system is on the bottom and the top portion of the rhizome over here is where the foliage or the leaves were. You could see that they were cut down shorter prior to being packaged for sale. So now the rhizome feels very dry to the touch and very, very light. In fact, the rhizome that came prepackaged is way too dry to be planted the way it is. So it is always highly, highly recommended that you pre-soak your iris rhizome in some sort of a bowl or a bucket with room temperature tap water for at least two to three hours prior to planting your rhizome in the ground. So I was able to start pre-soaking some of the rhizomes. You could see over here in this bucket. Don't mind the bucket, guys. It's uh, one of my kids' trick-or-treating buckets, but the handles broke, so why not use it for gardening purposes? So I pre-filled this bucket with room temperature tap water and I already pl placed some of the rhizomes into this bucket so they can pre-soak. 
So I'm going to do essentially the same thing with the rest of the rhizomes because the longer they will pre-soak, the better it is. So basically the rhizomes have to rehydrate prior to being planted in the ground. So I'm going to give these rhizomes good three hours to pre-soak over here in my kitchen in this room temperature tap water and I'll keep an eye on them. And then we're going to go outside together with you and I'm going to show you guys exactly where I will be planting these beautiful flowers. While my rhizomes are uh, pre-soaking, basically rehydrating, it, there's something very important to note when it comes to planting and growing iris. So iris, bearded iris to be exact, is a full sun loving plant. You have to acknowledge the fact that when they will grow and form the flower bud and bloom, they will be relatively tall plants. So the mature height is, will be about three feet. So what does that mean? And in fact, some varieties, some coloring will reach a height of four feet, as you could see over here, such as the full tide variety. So what does that mean? That means that you should be ready and willing to provide support for your iris plants in a form of a stick or, or some kind of a stake. So as the label suggests, and many of us home gardeners already know how tall iris flowers get once they reach their full maturity and start to bloom, so if you do know that the flower that you're growing will be at least three feet in height, if not taller, like this variety or some other varieties, be prepared, provide that stake or that support that your plant will need because some varieties of iris might have multiple flower blooms per stalk. And the weight of these flowers, especially if it rains or say it got hit with water through a sprinkler system, those flower bud blooms will get relatively heavy, very heavy. And this weight might, most likely will cause the flowers to bend down, snap and break off. And you do not want to cause that damage to your plant. Also, as you could see over here, this particular variety is excellent for cut flowers and it reblooms. So iris, bearded iris, is a perennial flower and there is no need to annually dig up the rhizomes to overwinter them. They will be absolutely fine in the ground where you will plant them. All you have to do is trim back the foliage mid to late fall and leave them exactly where they are growing and they will come back for you next growing season. The reason why I'm pre-soaking all of the bearded iris rhizomes together in one container, one bucket per se, is simply because I will be planting all of my rhizomes close to each other in one garden area, specifically my rose garden area you guys have seen that area before from my previous videos. That area, that garden area, gets full sun on a daily basis, at least six hours of sunlight per day. And again, the colors that I selected, so the iris varieties that I selected, are very close in coloring or the hues. So I don't mind intermixing them and planting them next to each other. As I know when they'll bloom, the coloring, the mix of colors will be absolutely stunning. Now, for those of you who might be planting your iris variety, the rhizomes in different areas, or say you do not want to intermix the colors, or you simply want to know which varieties, which one it starts to come up, I do recommend separating the rhizomes into different containers before soaking, pre-soaking them and clearly labeling each of the 
containers or buckets. So you will know which rhizome variety is which, as again, they all look exactly the same. But if you don't mind intermixing the colors or planting them together in the same space, there is no need to separate the rhizomes. There is no need to label them. My bearded iris rhizomes have been pre-soaking over here in my kitchen in a bucket for roughly the last hour and a half. I've been keeping an eye on them to make sure that everything's okay. So I wanted to give you an update on what the rhizomes are looking like now, an hour and a half into the pre-soaking process. They still have quite a way to go, but I just wanted to show you already what a difference pre-soaking makes. You could see that the leaves or the foliage here, you could see how much softer, pliable it got. Now I'm able to bend the leaves without snapping them or breaking them off. Here's another one. Take a look, guys. Before they just felt dry and stiff. You, you can now even see the root system much better as some of the dirt washed off. The roots starting to rehydrate. Let me see if I can pull one all the way from the bottom. Here you go, here's an example of another one. You could see the foliage is nice and soft and pliable. Here is what the rhizome looks like as it's pre-soaking. Of course, it will get a bit uh, larger, wider in sizing the longer it sits in the water. Because again, we have no idea how long these rhizomes or roots have been sitting packaged in a plastic bag. Now that they're getting the moisture into their system again, they will look more plump, more uh, larger, bigger. You will see the root system much clearer than what it looked like when you just pulled it out. You could see it's starting to get new buds over here for the new roots. So this is looking great. This is looking exactly what I want it to look like. Here's another example. As it's pre-soaking, you could see all the new little root buds that these rhizomes are already setting. Here is another one. These round little circle looking structures, those are the new root buds that these rhizomes already set. Perfect, perfect, exactly what we wanna be seeing. So now let's give it another hour and a half or so at least, and the rhizomes will be ready for planting in my home garden. So the three hours are up, guys. My uh, bearded iris rhizomes have been pre-soaking in this bucket for the last three hours. So it's time to drain out the water and it's time to go on over to my rose garden and to plant these in the soil. Again, why I call it the rose garden is because majority of the plants growing there are rose shrubs. However, plenty of other perennials and spring blooming flowers growing there as well. I just wanted to briefly show you what a bearded iris rhizome looks like after roughly three hours of pre-soaking. Here, let me get a, one of the most clear examples. Here's a perfect one, guys. You could see over here that the foliage is nice and soft. It is bendable, workable with. It's not stiff anymore and dry. You can clearly separate and see the root system as well. Also, uh, take a look at all these tiny yellow colored buds over here by their old root system. So some of you might ask, what are these little nodes or buds? So these are basically new roots on our bearded iris rhizome. So this is excellent, excellent news as this is exactly what we wanna be seeing. Now let me drain out the water. All I'm doing is just draining out the water in which they've been sitting here into my kitchen sink. 
So here is, here are, if I may say our rhizomes, I have a whole bucket of them. So we're going to go right now and plant them in my home garden. So come with me, guys. Here we are, guys. We are in my rose garden area, as I like to call it. It is right in front of my home between the two driveways. Again, I do like to call it the rose garden area as I have lots and lots of established uh, and younger actually roll shrubs growing here. Here are some examples of it. Some are still in full bloom. However, I do have other gorgeous perennials growing in this garden space as well. However, they have been already pruned and cut back for the fall and winter season. Some hosta, some, some hibiscus. You could see for yourself, guys. But this area gets full sun with six plus hours of direct sunlight per day. Here are some examples of my more established, tall, beautiful green rose shrubs. I have my peonies uh, in this area as well over there remember we did the video together of how you should prune your peonies down in the fall season you can still see the supports there i have my lilacs over here some hydrangea shrubs over here some smaller trees but either way guys today we are going to plant my bearded iris my new beard iris, if I may say, in the same area over here. I do have some established bearded iris growing in this area as well. And I'm going to show you in a second what those guys look like currently right now in the month of November. Over here, you could see some of my more mature established iris plants. Here are some uh, leaves that are left, the foliage. As you could see, I already pruned them down for the fall and winter seasons. But this is just an example of what should be done, what more established iris, a bearded iris plants look like now in the late fall. Their foliage should be cut down to roughly one to two inches above the soil level. We do not dig them up here in zone 7A as they are pretty cold hardy here and they do absolutely fine the way they are. So I leave the root system intact and I just prune down the foliage to roughly two inches above the soil level. Here we are guys. I wanna show you exactly what you will be needing in order to properly and correctly plant your bearded iris plants in your home garden. Of course, first and foremost, you will need your iris plants, the rhizomes. I have them here sitting in this bucket. Again, please excuse the bucket, um, what it looks like. Again, the handles broke off of my kids' buckets, but why not salvage it? I used it to pre-soak my rhizomes. So here they are, there are quite a few of them. You can see that they're still wet and moist. You could see the foliage is much more workable and pliable. So of course our rhizomes. Next, you will need a hand shovel or a digging tool of some sort to make our planting hole. You will need gardening gloves of some sort. I also like to use a starter fertilizer or a slow release fertilizer. Every time I plant any single shrub, bush, a tree, flower, whether it's an annual or perennial. So ideally uh, when it comes to bearded iris, I do like to use the Spoom Organic Biotone Starter Fertilizer. If you guys don't have that on hand, you use that up or can't uh, get access to it for whatever reason. Another one you can use, which is awesome, and I use it on all of my bulbs. It is called the Spoom Organic Bulb Tone Bulb and Flower Food Fertilizer. 
that will do wonders as well. Again, guys, I will link this these in the comment section below. However, if you do not have access to either one, by all means, you can use any granular, slow-release fertilizer that you have laying in your home, your garage, your shed, or any slow-release plant fertilizer that you can currently afford and get your hands on. Either way, guys, many of you have been asking me, do, am I associated with a Spoom Organic? Why do I keep showing these products? No, guys, I am not associated with them. I do not market their products. I do not make any sort of profit from them whatsoever. I simply use these products in my home garden on every single day basis, and they do wonders for me, and I truly, highly recommend them to you guys as well. Fall 2023 is in full gear. You could see leaves keep falling. So I did try to clean up the area in which I will be digging quite a bit. So now let's make our digging hole. So when it comes to bearded iris, you the hole which you must dig the planting hole should not be very deep. In fact, it should only be about half an inch to maximum of an inch in depth. No more than that. Let me explain to you why. So here is our rhizome. So here again is our rhizome, our bearded iris rhizome. Again, you could see here in the sunlight, you could see all the new fruit buds forming on the bottom, which is exactly what we want to be seeing. You could see the old root system. As with any flower plant we're planting, of course, we want to ensure that we plant our bearded iris rhizome root side down, of course. So here is the hole I have made. You could see it's not deep at all. It's quite shallow, in fact. So when it comes to bearded iris, we want to plant, of course, root side down, as I just mentioned, but also at an angle, a slight angle per se. And when we backfill the hole, you want to make sure that this older foliage still remains above the soil level here you go guys i have made my planting hole dug it up again it's no more than half an inch in depth i've amended it with some biotone starter fertilizer again guys no pressure use any slow release fertilizer granular i prefer that you can currently get your hands on so here you go now it's time to position our pre-soaked rhizome like so into the planting hole. Make sure that the foliage will stay exposed above the soil level, even after you back fill your planting hole. Here you go. I have positioned my pre-soaked rhizome. You could see it's at a slight angle. The foliage is still sticking above, up above the soil level, which is very, very important. You could see how shallow the hole is. It's not the same depth as we would do when we plant our tulips, our daffodils. So it's a bit different. Now what you want to do is basically back fill your hole. I like to give it a little tap, not too deep. Bearded iris is not one of those plants that likes to be buried in great depth or it will not grow for you guys. Don't bury it too much. Half an inch to one inch in depth and one inch I would say you're pushing it. That would be the maximum. So let's get the rest of my bearded iris rhizomes planted right over here. Here is another example. So here's the first one that I planted. I'm going to leave a few inches in distance. So here's the second hole. Again, guys, it's not 
deep at all. It's a pretty shallow hole. Now that I've made my planting hole, I'm going to slightly amend it with my slow release fertilizer. And I'm going to place my pre-soaked bearded iris rhizome into this planting hole. Here you go, guys. I have amended yet my second hole with the fertilizer, slow release fertilizer. Now let's get one more pre-soaked rhizome out of our container. Doesn't matter which one as they all have to be planted today. So I will place it once again at a slight angle like so. Of course, root side down. I want to make sure that the foliage is sticking up above the soil level. And once that is done, you can go ahead and back fill your rhizomes with the soil. Again, make sure the foliage will remain above the soil level shallow hole about a quarter of an inch will be ideal like so let's amend it with some slight amount of fertilizer placing our rhizome root side down slight angle and back filling our planting hole giving it a little love tap if I may call it that perfect leave some spacing and keep going do not exceed an inch in the depth bearded iris do not like that they like to be planted at a shallow surface Angle, root side down, a little tap to push it down into the soil surface. Remember the foliage must stay up above the soil level. No, we are progressing quite nicely. As you could see, half of our rhizomes, our beard iris rhizomes, have already been planted. Here are some of the ones I have planted. Another half of our bucket to go. So let's get started. Here you go, guys. I am all done planting my bearded iris over here in my rose garden area. You could see how beautiful and sunny it is right now in this area. And as the day goes on, it gets sunnier and sunnier, plenty of sunlight. So I'm sure that these bearded iris will be very, very happy growing over here. And I'll make sure to keep you guys updated. I'll give you the progress on how they are sprouting, how they are growing come next spring and summer seasons. Also, uh, stay tuned for those videos as well. But here you go, guys. That is how easy it is to plant some beautiful bearded iris in your home garden. And I guarantee if you follow the steps that I've shown you today in this video, you're going to have some beautiful, abundant, gorgeous iris growing in your home garden. This is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here on this mild, sunny, gorgeous fall day in Long Island, New York, Zone 7A. Today, I planted over 40 bearded iris from a rhizome behind me in my rose garden area and i showed you guys exactly how i plant my bearded iris step by step everything from pre-soaking the garden purchased rhizomes to how i plant them over here in my home garden for those of you who enjoyed today's video, if you found the content of this video to be useful, helpful, informative in any way, show me that support, guys, by clicking thumbs up below. Talk to me, guys, my fellow viewers, and you guys, my precious subscribers. Let me know, do you have 
bearded iris growing in your home gardens if so when and how do you guys plant it let me know if you plant it from rhizomes already established plants i would love to see those stunning pictures from you guys for those of you who haven't yet subscribed to my garden channel yet you watch my videos all the time what are you waiting for guys do so today super easy for you to do yet so pleasing and rewarding to me knowing that you guys watch my videos that you enjoy the content of my videos that you find my gardening videos to be useful helpful informative in your own home garden click the subscribe button below it's that simple guys yet so rewarding to me for those of you guys who have been watching my videos who have been following my channel and never ever again want to miss yet another new uploaded gardening video. Don't forget to click the bell icon as well. YouTube will send you notification every single time I'll upload a new gardening video. I want to thank all of you, my loyal viewers, and you guys, my precious subscribers, for that continuous support. I personally want to take a minute to thank each and every single one of you, my loyal viewers, my precious subscribers, for that continuous support when it comes to watching my videos and my gardening channel. I truly and sincerely appreciate each and every single one of you. I want to tell you guys that I wish each one of you health and happiness, and I want each and every single one of you to be well. And as I always say at the end of each and every one of my videos, happy gardening, guys. And I'll see you again in my new upcoming garden videos. Bye, guys. Stay warm and healthy.